Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. There's a quote all over the Catholic internet attributed to Pope Benedict, which he never actually said. Like many quotes attributed to people, especially saints, that they never said. Sometimes these quotes are a mashing together, as it were, of various things they said over a period of time, and then authors and internet types take huge liberties and arrange separate thoughts, putting them together as though it was one continual utterance. The, the specific quote attributed to Pope Benedict that we're referencing is this one. The world offers you comfort, but you were not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. While the gist or the upshot of that is true, it's not what he said. It likely arose from a combination of things he both said at various talks and what he wrote in his 2007 encyclical, Spe Salvi, which translates to Saved in Hope. What he wrote is the following. Man was created for greatness, for God himself. He was created to be filled by God but his heart is too small for the greatness to which it is destined. It must be stretched. What he spoke at various times were phrases like, man is not created for comfort. So yeah, the upshot is we are not made for ease, but God, good enough. But there's something much deeper here, and it's something which has been glossed over for decades and downplayed by church leaders. Man has zero capability of achieving greatness. It is God and God alone who bestows greatness, because greatness, properly understood, is life with God. Anything outside of life with God and in God, sooner or later, is found wanting, is insufficient, and therefore not great. Yet a host, a veritable cornucopia of insufficient temporary satisfactions are placed before us by the millions comfort offered over greatness. The first step to a life with God is a rejection of these false gods, and there are many of them. This is the chief error, for example, of James Martin, as he preaches to confused audiences of homosexuals, just people who see nothing wrong with it, who are mostly baptized Catholics. It is also the chief error of the hierarchy, which stays silent about Martin's evil. At its heart, accepting comfort over greatness, life with God, is a violation of the first commandment. You shall have no other gods besides me. Yet to choose comfort over greatness is precisely that, opting for a fake God over God himself. So how does one aspire to greatness? Not achieve it, just aspire to it. We never achieve greatness, God grants it. Note, for example, the Tower of Babel account. It states specifically in sacred scripture, they desired to be great, the motivation for their action. God wiped out those plans post haste. But then he shuffled over to Ur and spoke to Abram saying, I will make of you a great nation. It is God and God alone who bestows greatness we just need to be worthy of receiving it, and worthiness comes through our actions, which are, if you love me, keep my commandments. Love entails rejecting comfort when it becomes a block to becoming worthy. Ultimately, it demands sacrifice, and not just some sacrifice which is normal and usual in the day-to-day -day of human life. Even atheists make sacrifices, sometimes repeatedly. But the sacrifice must entail the view, the intention, to be made for greatness with God. Sacrifice on its own is meaningless. In fact, sacrifice is woven into the fabric of daily life, even for the most selfish person. A selfish person works and sacrifices some of his wealth for a house or food or a car and all that. Ultimately, all sacrifice is is just an exchange of one thing for another, a thing you hold valuable for something you consider as more valuable. So you exchange it. But unless the object of the exchange is God, it will ultimately disappoint. Food perishes, houses need constant repair and upkeep, cars break down, 
No earthly comfort ever suffices. Sex, money, power, drugs, all of them are oriented towards self, and therefore they have no substance of their own to bring about greatness. The Christian life is the cross, the sacrifice here for the reward later. It's so basic, you say, but if it's so basic, why do we never hear about it? The James Martins of the world, the U.S. bishops, the worldwide hierarchy as a whole, are rejecting the cross and constructing a Tower of Babel, looking to establish some kind of great civilization of controlling the climate and reimagining nations and all of that. Like in the Old Testament, it will be brought to ruin. It's just too bad that so many leaders in the church have cast their lot with those building the tower as opposed to those embracing the cross and being chosen by God for greatness. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.